Welcome, I'm Erin Becker, the director of the Cambridge Art Association, and we're pleased to have you join us for our first Blue 2021 talk. Um, the exhibit is on view uh, through December 17th. The current part is on view through November 27th, and I will have our associate director, Candace Van Carey, introduce our artists. Hi all, I'm Candace Van Carey, um, coming uh, from Somerville over here. Thank you so much to Ada and Wiley for joining us today and talking about your work a little bit. I'm very excited to introduce the two of you and hear a little bit more of your work. Um, so to start, we have Ada Valborg uh, Seeger daughter. And I did ask, <laughs> Ada was very kind to um, explain how to pronounce their name correctly. So thank you, Ada. Um, Ada is a fine artist devoted to print printmaking. Growing up in Iceland has shaped her sense of visual experiences, sense of color and form. The landscape allows unobstructed horizon views and it can be said that Ada is somewhat obsessed with seeing far and wide. In her monotype hand pulled prints, she attempts to enhance the mood of the landscape where earth meets sky. Uh, and our next artist is Wiley Holton. Wiley is a New England based artist whose work is an exploration of geometry, line weight, color theory, and mental health. She has worked in oil, acrylic, graphite, ink, clay, and wood. Born in Boston in 1997, Wiley Holton recently graduated from, with distinction from Colby College with a major in studio art and a minor in mathematics, which will be very apparent when you see their work. <laughs> um, Wiley Hilton's kaleidoscope paintings articulate the chaos of anxiety and depression that stem from her ADHD and in depicting how her brain feels and functions, challenge the misconceptions and generalizations that people attach to this neurological disorder and mental illness in general. So thank you both and I will pass it along to Ada who will start us off. Thank you very much. Um, I'm so glad to be here and um, I appreciate um, the opportunity to um, submit my work to the Cambridge Arts Association. And, um, and it was great to be there at the reception with so many people. I haven't been anywhere for so long where there were so many people that, that turned out. Um, so I'm going to do more of a show and tell um, about my work and uh, what I've been doing for the past decades. Um, and um, so I'm going to share my screen with you and go through my um, show and tell with you. So here we go. Can everyone see my? Yes, you can see it. Right. Okay. So um, like um, it came out in, in the introduction, I am um, born in, um, and I grew up in Iceland. And I'm starting by showing uh, this um, little photo of my um, uncle who I was very devoted to and he was my role model and my mentor. And yours truly is right there, standing by his side, watching him draw. And I was able to be in his studio, smelling the oils. And um, and so he was, I admired everything he did and we were best of friends for, for all time. So um, let's see. I'm a, actually a graphic designer um, and I worked, was, um, I went to a four-year art college in Reykjavik um, back in the day and, um, and I chose my major to be graphic design um, and so I'm just, well, it was my uncle actually who advised me that I should do something that I could work with and um, be an independent woman in the future. 
And so he suggested that I really wanted to go into fine arts, but he decided that I, he suggested that I go to, into graphic design. So here are just a few um, logos I've done um, in the past. Um, and as I worked with my, um, um, my clients, um, who I got along with very well and uh, they were wonderful, I really got to a point where I wanted to do something for myself with um, and create my own parameters. I used to be also um, a book designer and I worked for publishing companies in uh, Boston for years. And so I decided I wanted to do a book um, on my own. And I gave myself that um, I would walk around um, Iceland's nature and with my camera and take pictures of wildflowers, uh, mostly because I wanted to learn about them myself. Um, and so um, it is in Icelandic because it follows the Icelandic um, alphabet, but there's a spread in it that um, uh, describes um, the alphabet of Iceland's wildflowers. Um, so each flower um, was started, the name started with um, a letter in the alphabet. And, um, and then I chose poetry to go with each um, plant and flower that had to do with it. So um, I really enjoyed it. And um, so that's my book. Um, and then um, I was approached by the Iceland um, Tourist Board um, to sort of update their uh, look and feel. So this is sort of a new branding for them. Um, they had a logo, which is the tiny little round, red, white, and blue one at the, at the bottom there um, that they had had for, I don't know, 25 years or something. And, they really wanted to, to not get rid of it, but to build on it and do something um, like a new umph. Um, whereas tourism in Iceland was really growing very quickly. Um, and um, so the year before COVID hit, there were over 2 million tourists um, visiting Iceland through the year. And so the tourist board wanted to um, really be a little more visible. Um, so this is what um, my studio did with them. And this is a current project that I'm working on. Um, and it's a, co a music college uh, in Reykjavik. And um, it's students between 16 and 25 or so old. And they didn't hadn't really had a logo. Um, but they were ready to do something and uh, a new um, look and feel and a brand for the college. And, um, and this is what we're working with right now. Um, so um, I moved to Western Massachusetts um, in 2016. And the picture of yours truly there on the right, <laughs> was taken in February of 2017, which was my first day as a full-time member of CMA's uh, printmaking studio in Florence, Massachusetts. Um, it has been sort of my second home um, for the past years. And I have learned so much, um, taken a lot of workshops because it had been a long, long, long time since I did printmaking way back um, in college and um, methods had changed and um, everything had changed. So I felt like I really wanted to start from scratch and be uh, mindful of um, what I was about to embark on. Um, and um, I was um, directed by um, a lot of great teachers um, at CMAs and Liz Shelfin, the director, has been um, my mentor and um, my friend um, in, in all ways. Um, the, the printmaking studio focuses on the environmentally uh, safe printing uh, mass materials and methods. Um, and so it is such a joy and 
as I said, it's my second home, really. <laughs> um, I want to show you some photographs that I've taken in Iceland over the years. Uh, just to give you a sense of where I'm coming from in my art, um, that the um, landscape influences my art a great deal. The fact that you can see far and wide, there aren't um, woods or trees to obstruct. And so you can also kind of see the, um, the color blue, how, how vivid that is um, as we go. So the black sand, the, the greenery, the white um, glaciers, um, and a big, big sky with lots of interesting cloud formations that are inspiring. Um, Iceland also um, has geographic uh, or um, <laughs> geothermal water um, in the ground that is used uh, for swimming pools and hot pools all over the country. And people really do enjoy it. And I think it's kind of like the um, English pub, you know, people come together and they talk about current events and politics and all kinds of things and catch up on news with one another. And um, here's uh, two photographs that were taken this summer at the beautiful lake, um, in southern um, Iceland. And it does give you a sort of a, a sense of where I'm coming from in some of my art. Um, I'm going to show you um, three, three um, projects that I've done in the past years. And this one um, is, is um, a monotype work. Um, it, it's a portfolio with 10 um, prints in a, in a case that I built. Um, and this was uh, submitted and uh, to the editions um, artist book fair in New York City and was actually acquired by the New York City Library Special Collection. Uh, so I was very proud of that. Um, and so the, just to give you a sense of the size, the, the plate that I used is uh, 22 inches wide, but only two, two inches um, uh, tall. So it's very long and, and very narrow. Um, and I chose to use um, the paper that's, that it barely fits on. And I'm just going to run through the 10 prints um, and these are all monotype prints and, um, and they are um, all done on the same plexiglass um, class, uh, uh, plate and, um, and they, run, they run numerous, numerous times through the press to, so until I can achieve um, what, I, what I want to um, to get out of it. Um, these images are all based on photographs that I have taken, um, but obviously they're all freeform um, onto the plate. Um, no photographic um, method is used um, in these prints. Here is um, another project that I um, also was able to submit to the editions and artist book fair in New York City in 2019 um, called Getting Good at Saying Goodbye um, and their snippets of Iceland. Um, it's a box that I built with um, um, an accordion book inside. And I'm just going to read very quickly to you the statement um, that um, accompanies this piece. Uh, living away from my home country, I have been overwhelmed with homesickness for decades, missing my family, my native tongue, and fami family, familiar surroundings took a toll on my daily life. It has taken me a long, long time to work my way past these feelings and allow myself to be in the moment wherever I am. However, Iceland is vivid in my mind, and I find that I turn to the beauty and ruggedness of its nature in my art. 
Um, so um, just to show you a little bit of the process, on the left are the photopolymer uh, plates um, that I used. So this is a photopolymer intaglio method of printmaking. And so you can kind of see the imagery is um, visible on the plates because they have been developed um, already. And the upper middle, I printed a color palette that I wanted to use. Um, and so those were printed separately. And then down below, um, you can see some of the um, images already printed on top of those um, colored um, papers. In the top right, you can see sort of the size of plates um, in my hand there and the um, and the plate has been inked up and is um, ready to be printed. And actually it shows the house where I grew up in Old Reykjavik. <laughs> and down below, um, I have, am beginning to um, cut, up, cut up the, um, the images in the size that I need them to be. Um, and this is showing um, just the process of uh, building the box around um, the, the book um, and not much more to say about that. But I did decide that the title of the piece is inside the cover of the bo box so that you need to open it in order to see the name um, of the piece. And this is more of an overview of, of that piece um, and not really a whole lot to say about that, but there were 20 images um, on both sides of this accordion um, book. And um, I used a very heavy black stock um, as the, the base. And then um, I adhered the images on both sides and connected the uh, plates together with a black satin um, board um, ribbon. Uh, that left sort of a, a, a little space um, and a little um, light there in between so that the book could be successfully folded into a, an accordion. And then COVID happened to all of us. <laughs> I was, um, I was very, um, really, I was not, it, in a mood really to be very creative during COVID. Um, the um, printmaking studio closed and at least for a time being, and I was, I couldn't even pick up a pencil or a brush or anything. Um, and so I turned to my knitting that I've done for years and years, since I was a child basically, and I, um, knit these four blankets for my children and their families um, during, during COVID. And um, so that gave me pause and um, a way to think about things, my life, everybody's life during this pandemic. Um, but then um, came another opportunity um, because I overcame that and um, I went back into the studio and I felt like I didn't really have much to do with what came out of me at that time. It just flowed um, out of me basically. Um, and I did eight um, monotype prints as a series of, it, of which one is um, at the current show in Cambridge. And um, again, I'm turning to the um, obsession of horizons. <laughs> and just quickly, I'm going to um, read just the first part of my statement for the series. 
growing up in Iceland has shaped my sense of visual experiences, um, sense of color and form, and the landscape allows unobstructed horizon views. And it can be said that I am somewhat obsessed with seeing far and wide. And in my monotype hand pulled prints, I attempt to enhance the mood of the landscape where sky meets earth. And so now I'm just going to um, go through and show you the eight um, works. And I don't really need to say a whole lot while you take a look at those. Actually, I forgot, I put a little uh, slide in here to show you um, a bit of the process that I use. The plexiglass um, plate is um, the size of my print. And I never, for this series, did I um, sketch, do any pre-sketches of what I was gonna do um, at all. I basically just took my Sharpie and I drew the shapes that I, that, that I wanted to have onto the plate. And then um, I did a lot of uh, blue um, color samples. And, um, and then I started to apply uh, one by one the forms um, with ink, the Aqua inks that I use. Um, and numerous, numerous, numerous times <laughs> through the press um, but this, these um, images are um, some of that, the thing that were on the way to become um, the final prints. And here they are. And that's the end of my presentation. I just want to thank you for watching and listening. And I thank um, Cambridge Arts Association so much for um, the opportunity to, to show my work. And of course, to the juror, Dr. Jessica May, who couldn't join us today, but um, I am very appreciative um, of all that you've allowed me to do. So thank you. Thank you, Ada. All right, and we will turn it over to Wiley. Get you in here. All right, and Wiley, whenever you're ready. All right, um, so my name is Wiley Holton. Um, I um, am one of the um, three jurors choice award winners um, and I am so honored to be here talking with you all about my work. Um, so I'm going to share my screen just like Ada did um, so that you guys have some visuals as I talk about my work. All right so this painting in the background here is um, Autumn Blues One which is the painting that um, is in the CAA show. Um, so just as a background kind of growing up, um, I was always um, the artistic kid. I was always making art and I'm so lucky that from such a young age, I had such supportive parents um, that really encouraged me to paint and draw and just do all of the art that I wanted. Um, I know that's um, not the case with a lot of artists, but I'm so lucky that um, my parents were so supportive always. And my mom's favorite story of me growing up is that um, we went to the circus when I was maybe four and she asked me, you know, what was your favorite part of the circus? And instead of answering her, I ran into my room and started drawing the scene that I enjoyed the most. Um, and my mom claims from then on, she knew. Um, but I was always um, doing art 
I was always taking all the art classes that I could. Um, and so I knew going into college that I wanted to study art. Um, I didn't know specifically painting yet, um, but I knew I wanted to study art and I also knew I wanted to study math and both of those things made sense with my brain. Um, and so I, I ended up um, majoring in painting and then minoring in math. So I had both those things going on. Um, but in college, um, you know, we all start with foundation painting classes um, and then work our way into more personal work. So I started um, my personal work. I started working on um, kaleidoscopes and I became interested in abstract art um, in college when we had to start doing those kind of assignments. Um, and I needed a way to make my abstract paintings more personal and more recognizable as my own rather than just, you know, any old abstract piece of art. Um, so I challenged myself the summer going into my senior year to kind of find a way to blend um, the math that I love and painting in a way that was very much you know, my own style. Um, so I came across the idea, you know, experimenting um, of using kaleidoscopes. Um, so with the painting on the left here, this is my first, first attempt. It's a little crazy, um, but my first attempt at a kaleidoscope painting. Um, and so for these paintings, I first went through with a drawing compass and a protractor. Um, and I drew out every single shape that you see filled in with paint. So everything was drawn out with graphite first. Um, and then I went in on top with paint. As you can see, it's not very clean. You know, I have a lot of different areas that, you know, I could have touched up, um, but as far as you know, a project in college that was that was good enough. Um, and then I transitioned to the painting you see on the right there. So with this painting, I stuck with a black background. So I painted it black first, and then I went in on top with graphite. And as you can see, it still has that kaleidoscope shape. Um, and you know, mathematically, these are kaleidoscopes. We have three different vertices or kind of focal points um, where the shapes stop repeating. Um, so the painting on the right, I broke up that kaleidoscope. So it's not one continuous kaleidoscope like the painting on the left. Um, it's a little bit more chaotic on the right. You have different kaleidoscopes starting in different places where they quote, shouldn't be starting. Um, so I really wanted to play with kind of creating that chaos. Um, and I found that when I was making these paintings, um, I was really using them as kind of a form of art therapy, um, which I would say that, you know, most artists use art as a form of therapy in their own way. Um, and so I was kind of, using these paintings as a way to get out what I was feeling. So the painting on the left there, the colors are so chaotic um, because I really wanted it to come across visually um, as kind of what a neurodivergent brain feels. So I have ADHD, which for those of you who aren't familiar with the acronym, that's Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Um, so I essentially have trouble with controlling my attention it's not a lack of attention, it's just an issue with controlling attention. So um, I wanted the colors to be very chaotic, you know, having trouble finding a certain point for your eye to look at. Um, and then with the painting on the right, it was more about um, kind of creating those layers, adding depth into the painting to see kind of what's emerging from the distance. Um, so I started with those um, and this was my senior fall in college. Um, and then my senior spring, I had, I worked on this one piece here, um, which was six feet by six feet. Um, and the statement for this piece is on the left there. Um, so I grew up in an old house, one where the stairs would creak of their own accord, one after the other in ascending order. For as long as I can remember, I would lie awake at night listening to the sound of invisible footsteps climbing the stairs. My mind would race, 
my heart beat, my heart would beat out of my chest. My breathing would become slow, shallower. I would convince myself that someone was climbing those stairs. Infinite what ifs ceaselessly spiraled through my brain. My parents always told me to call for them if I couldn't fall asleep. I'd call for my parents every single night, but they never heard me. My voice never seemed to be loud enough. So I'd just lie there at six years old, doing exponents of two in my head until I got tired enough to fall asleep. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32, times two is 64, times two is 128, times two is 256, times two is 512, times two is 1024, times two is 2048, times two is 4696, times two is 8192. So with this painting, similar to the last black one, um, I started with that black background and then I worked with graphite with my drawing compass protractor to create um, the different shapes in here. Um, so this painting was so big, it was six by six feet again. Um, so I um, drew on it when it was flat. I had it flat on the ground um, and um, drew on it that way. And I spent, Few months working on this piece and I was lucky enough to win the President Purchase Award for my um, senior art show um, which meant that the president of the college purchased the piece and it is now held um, in the Colby College Museum of Art Permanent Collection. Um, so this was really kind of the jumping off point for the rest of my work including Autumn Blues One which is in the um, blue show. So um, here's a little video just so you guys can get an idea of the process. Um, it's a time lapse so it is sped up. Um, I wish this was how fast I could draw um, but just an idea of how the process goes um, in all of my paintings even the ones where I paint the shapes in um, they all start out with these graphite lines first. All right, and so as you can see, you know, that was probably about an hour and a half of drawing um, in real time. So each of these paintings, before I even get to the paint, I'm already doing a whole, whole first process. Um, so I know this, this image is a little bit hard to see via Zoom, um, but this piece was the next piece that I made after that, um, that circumferences of the void large black piece. Um, so this one is titled, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Um, and I wanted this piece to really make the viewer question exactly what they're seeing um, because I did use two different um, colored pencils here. So I'm sure it looks mostly blue to the eye via um, a computer screen, um, but on top of the orange sections, um, I used blue and then on top of the pink sections, I actually used a green colored pencil. And I really wanted that, um, wanted to trick the eye into thinking that they are the same color um, and kind of make that viewer question, you know, what am I seeing? Is this really real? Is this, am I imagining something? Um, so I really wanted to play around with color with this one um, because I, I hadn't played around with color in the lines um, in my previous paintings. Um, and then this painting, um, it's called Not In My Body. And this one is four by four feet. Um, I should mention the, the previous painting was um, three by four feet. Um, this one is four by four feet. And this one is um, just plain graphite um, on a white background. Um, and again, kind of breaking up those kaleidoscopes to really create kind of a chaotic, um, chaotic situation. Um, so, Again, with this one, I really wanted the viewer to kind of be in, um, kind of be in the mindset that I was in creating this piece, which was um, kind of conveying anxiety, what it feels like if anyone has experienced an anxiety attack, a panic attack, anything like that, kind of that fight or flight feeling, that is what I, I was, 
um, putting into this piece. Um, and I should say that with a lot of these kaleidoscope pieces, the process itself um, can be more rewarding in a way um, to me than the end product. So just creating, because this process is so hands-on for me, um, sometimes at the end, um, it's obviously I'm happy with how it comes out. You know, I get to a point where I'm happy with how it looks, but a lot of the time it is more about the actual process of creation. So I then started kind of going back to that original concept of filling in the shapes with paint. Um, so I have two different examples here. One, the one on the right, the kaleidoscope is fully intact. Um, it stretches all the way to the edges of the um, panel. And then the painting on the left has a broken kaleidoscope, um, just like most of the previous paintings. Um, so just picking my color palettes and I usually pick three or four main colors, um, one for each um, kind of center point of the kaleidoscope. And then I just slowly bridge the colors between each center point. Um, so there's no particular rhyme or reason um, for the color schemes. I, I'm just trying to kind of either explore different color schemes that I, you know, I'm not super comfortable with, or I do have something in mind. Um, so the painting on the right is titled Petunia in the Womb. Um, so I really wanted those kind of floral colors in there. And Petunia is what my mom called me um, before I was born. So this is kind of a self-portrait in a way um, and definitely dedicated to my mom. Um, and then we have um, August Blues One. Um, and so with August Blues One, I really wanted to um, encapsulate the feeling of the end of summer and just kind of the sad feeling, you know, we love summer, especially in New England, so happy that it is finally here. And then it gets too hot and we're kind of like, oh no. Um, but then by the end of summer, you really don't want summer to end. And so that's what this painting was about. And that's what I wanted the colors to um, convey. So kind of those neutral blues, soft colors, a little bit nostalgic. Um, and again, with that broken kaleidoscope. Um, yeah. So um, again, the, it's, it's a lot about the process for me. Um, and all of these paintings, even the painted kaleidoscopes, they all start out as just the graphite lines on, on black. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I have for you guys. So Thank you for everyone who's come and listened. Thank you to everyone who's going to be listening later. And um, again, thank you to Dr. Jessica May. Thank you, Wiley. And I think um, we will kind of start off a little bit with um, Wiley and Ada um, asking each other questions about their work. I'm going to add Ada to um, screen. And yeah, thank, thank you both. That was really illuminating about both of your work. And, and um, I think you have, there's definitely some over, a little bit of overlap there, but there's a lot of uh, differences as well. Um, Ada or Wiley, did, was there anything that kind of, some questions that came up for you um, when listening to Ada's work or vice versa? Yeah, um, I had one of my questions, um, Ada, is what made you go back to printmaking after um, being in graphic design for, for a while there? What kind of drew, drew you back in? Well, um, you know, um, I graduated from college in 1972. And um, so you could be my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> which would be nice, but I do have a granddaughter <laughs> who might be about your age. Um, so I went into um, graphic design to just be able to work and, you know, support myself and my family. And um, 
I was just always so busy um, with my work that I never had an opportunity to really do any fine art work on the side. I just didn't have the energy to do it. So, but I had always just thought, well, when I start to kind of um, diminish my graphic design work, um, I'm going to allow myself to go back and do what I wanted to do in the beginning, which was fine arts. And when I was in, um, you know, in the first two, uh, two years of college, um, there was just like you were saying, you know, the um, initial um, teachings of um, color and form and composition and all of those things. And then the, and during that time, the first two years, I did get to do some printmaking and I just, it just stuck with me always. And um, so that's, so now I'm to a point where I am doing it. I am doing some graphic design work, but um, I'm not running a studio anymore or working for a big publisher or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of why I'm, why I'm sort of back to square one almost. <laughs> and I'm, I feel like it's like my new life, you know? Mm -hmm. Amazing, <laughs> yeah. amazing. I was also wondering what's the largest um, size that you have printed? Um, well, I know your work is very, um, very long. Yeah, um, um, so I have been lately, I've been um, printing on a full size um, paper, which is, uh, 30 and a half wide and 24 um, high. So I started with just smaller work um, mm -hmm. because I was, you know, everything was so new to me. And so, but now I'm kind of getting bigger and trying to get bigger and see what happens. But, you know, six by six feet, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that is an enormous piece that you did there. Yes, wow. yes. <laughs> Um, so, so that piece, was that, uh, oil painting the, the background of it or? Um, it was acrylic. So all of the background, um, of these kaleidoscopes are acrylic, um, cause I do need them to dry very, yeah, very right, fairly true. quickly. <laughs> Not oil. And maybe it's, um, more, it's easier to draw with a graphite on top of, um, mm -hmm. acrylic than it would be on. Yes, oil, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's amazing. Um, I think that is really amazing work um, that you are doing with your math. Um, <laughs> it's just so interesting. And, you know, so the two of us are very different, but then, mm -hmm. you know, I love um, building uh, uh, boxes and, um, you know, I, I just, I love the ge geometry of like folding mm -hmm. and, you know, so I can identify with, with yeah. some of what you're doing. I just, you know. Absolutely. It, yeah. Your accordion, your accordion um, book, definitely. Yeah, it, it, it was a lot of work, <laughs> <laughs> but sure. I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, measuring and being very accurate and, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was that was very fun um, to do. Um, so I also, you know, I wanted to ask you about your piece, um, the August piece that's in the mm -hmm. show. And of course, this may not make sense, this question to the viewers who haven't seen the piece, but I went like right up to it and I mm -hmm. saw the, the lines between your color spaces that seem to be like embossed slightly. Yes, so that- how did, you get, how did you do that? Yeah, so that is honestly just a byproduct of um, taping off every shape to paint. Oh. So I tape off every shape um, and the shapes repeat. So I do all of one shape, no matter how many times it repeats. Um, and then I move on to the next one. Um, so. Yeah. Um, because I'm starting with a black background, a lot of the time, especially with lighter colors, I have to do three or four coats of paint. And so then by the time I take that tape off, um, it is kind of a raised edge. So then when they come together, they do kind of come up a little bit. Because I felt that that was such a delicate, beautiful 
detail mm. um, that might not be this well you know i'm sort of into detail so i had to go <laughs> all the way up to it and <laughs> examine it <laughs> and i really really enjoyed that sort of delicate uh, minimalism there mm -hmm. um, well thank you i appreciate yeah. that yeah so wiley i was gonna ask um mm -hmm. do you have any interest in like in maps at all because when i look at your work i see and maybe this is in conjunction with ada's work mm -hmm. um with this idea of landscape but i do kind of see this like map making um, um and you know obviously mathematics kind of plays a role in that i'd just be curious if that ever kind of crosses your mind yeah, it, it definitely does. Um, I, I've explored more of kind of a topographical field mm -hmm. um, in, in a separate series of paintings that are less geometric and more freeform. Um, but maps definitely, yeah, coordinates, all of that good stuff. Yeah, interesting. So um, I do want to open up to, we have some questions um, for you all. One of them is from Ava, and this is for Wiley. Um, I'd say a lot of people would say that abstract art and math are fundamentally at odds, each at opposite ends of the spectrum of order and often as unrelated extremes in the academic sense. However, both seem to fundamental, uh, seem fundamental to your identity and you combine them seamlessly in your work. Do you see them as unrelated or as two sides of the same coin? I, I definitely see them as, um, as two sides of the same coin. Um, but I, I do think that that's definitely a, a personal, a personal thing. Um, I know that that's, again, it's not, it's not, um, it's not typical, um, because one is more humanities, one is more of a, um, you know, mathematical, scientific. Um, so, yeah, I would I would say that just like my my unique interest in both of those things kind of creates that that um, that point where they combine that kind of spectrum of order, um, and I I just think that's potentially unique unique to me and my interests um, that that I do combine them. Yeah, and there's a follow up question also from Ava um, that my experience seeing fractals is almost exclusively in digital art. In our increasingly virtual world, do you think creating these sort of intricate patterns in a physical medium, um, and this kind of goes along with what Ada was saying about the specificity of, um, of the acrylic that you're using and kind of the little mm -hmm. idiosyncrasies that you get from that um, adds meaning that would be lost if done virtually. I think so. Um, I mean, as Ada was saying, like the the intricate, even the intricate lines between um, shapes of color in in my paintings, like that adds a new aspect that you can't really get from um, digital art unless it's three dimensional digital art, I suppose. Um, so, I think it's similar to um, you know a a painting done on paper or canvas compared to um, a painting done digitally. I think it's that same, that same sort of thing where there is just something different, something more tactile um, about creating it. Yeah. And it sounds like to me, it also is kind of a um, meditative process for you in terms of making, like you said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Ada, would you say that your work serves that person? purpose as well, that there is kind of this meditative process to connecting with the landscape that you are geographically kind of removed from, um, but um, kind of accessing it through memory or, um, yeah, kind of be interesting to hear how you think about place in that way. Yes, I think, I think so. I think, you know, somehow I just, um, I feel it's just such a part of me and, you know, I don't almost don't have to be there, but it's just within me somehow. And it just kind of, 
just kind of comes out of me. I, I'm not sure how to explain it in, in any other way. And I think, uh, you know, during the work, which, you know, it's so interesting to hear also from Wiley about like process and, and what you're feeling when you're, you know, working on it. I think, you know, I wish, I wish a piece when it's finished could also somehow um, give the viewer uh, more information about the feeling of when it was being created, uh, because that's the, um, the magic of um, doing the work yourself. But, you know, the viewer may never really see that. That's why I thought it was kind of interesting to, to share some of the process and, um, and just like Wiley was describing her process that was, that was really interesting. Mm. Yeah. Um, great. Well, thank you both. Um, I don't know if Aaron, did you have any questions or um, I see that we have a question for the CAA, but um, I would like to kind of keep the focus on uh, Wiley and Ada and their work. No, I don't have any questions. It was, it was very enlightening. Um, I, I always love seeing process um, because, you know, what what we get to see is, is always the finished product, but getting kind of a little peek behind the curtain of what you're what you're doing, uh, you know, printmaking, seeing all the layers that I think Ada and your work are apparent. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. You can see that there's multiple layers going on, but just seeing the process behind it and your thought process and with Wiley learning more about um, kind of what drives you in making your work and just sort of the meticulous nature. And, you know, you're mentioning to Ada that, you know, there is this three-dimensional quality because of, of the layers of paint and tape and things like that. It's just kind of um, things that, that I hope that when folks come in in person, cause them to take a little bit of a closer look. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, um, thank you both. I'm um, really Loretta if, Hubley. Can I speak? And oh. also, um, I would really admire you for being able to take stages of your artwork, such as I get so involved. I will even forget to take a picture of an artwork that I really am going to completely change, let alone the stages at the time. So that is really magnificent. And I also really relate to when you're doing things in landscape from memory, that becomes an archetype. And I feel that when I'm using landscape, in a different way than that, not quite as abstract, but I'm recomposing. It has a lot to do with memory and trying to reach something that is important, at least in my mind and feelings, and I hope it will relate to someone else. So I, I really admired that, that degree of process you're going with your mind through. Okay, and, and I admire why this so it's completely different from mine. I, I'm ADHD, <laughs> but I'm not at all mathematical, so. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder, Wiley, would you feel comfortable talking a little bit about that um, in relation to your work? Uh, I do think it is very interesting and it's not, you know, uh, I think the ADHD brain is something that not many people understand. Um, and mm -hmm. I appreciate it, your kind of, that you do want your art to um, be a part of kind of bringing awareness to that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, um, ADHD looks different for every person that has it. Um, so I can only really speak for myself and how I experience um, my brain. Um, and for me, again, it's it's more about controlling my attention. So um, like subjects in school that I wasn't interested in, like anything that wasn't art or math, like it, I just could not, could not get myself to focus on it, um, but, with my paintings and with um, the process of drawing out those kaleidoscopes, um, I am just fully, fully in there. Um, I love having all those different lines. Like I just love all, all of the process, all of the meticulousness of that process. Um, and so that is just one thing that my brain, you know, has latched onto and been like, yes, this is the thing. Um, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's great. 
All right, well, we should, probably should be wrapping up, but thank you, Wiley and Ada, and congratulations again on your awards. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.